Beloved in Christ, we want to thank you for joining us uh, once again in our study of understanding of the Father's heart. Uh, my name is Evangelist and Teacher Joseph A. Brown. Beloved, if there's one thing that I know, that there's not one individual, not one person uh, that's living on this earth who does not desire abundant life and peace. We all uh, desire that. But, beloved, you know, that is actually reserved for children of God, those who have been born in the kingdom of God. Life and peace is promised to them. But you know what? Just being a believer does not guarantee that we will walk in it. And our desire should be to walk in it because anytime we're walking in life and peace, then we are pleasing our Heavenly Father. We're walking that narrow road that Jesus spoke of. And beloved, that's what we ought to desire. We ought to desire life and peace. And we can't find that in going about life, doing it our own way. But rather, we must be willing to trust God's Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. Jesus is no longer with us. But one like Him is with us. And not only with us, but He's living and abiding on the inside of us. And He is the Holy Spirit of God. And we've got to be willing to trust that the Holy Spirit is here, very present uh, within us. It's not because of a feeling, not because of a sense of emotion, but we know that He abides in living us because Jesus Christ said that He would send Him to us. And beloved, we have to believe that and trust that. What? By faith. Everything is by faith. As the Word says, why have hope in something that you can acknowledge, something that you can see and feel? Why have hope when it's already there? Hope comes when you can't see it, you can't feel it, and you don't really know where uh, 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 it's emanating from or how it's working through you. You just have to believe and trust that the Holy Spirit will lead and uh, guide you. Beloved, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We praise you this day. We ask, Lord God, that you give us understanding and truth from your holy and divine word. Father God, we desire to grow in you, grow in the Lord. Father God, we ask that you renew our mind with your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. Beloved, to be spiritually Spiritually mindedness leads to abundant life and peace. And as I said earlier, we all desire abundant life and peace. We desire it, but it's not guaranteed to us unless we are willing to pursue it. And the only way for us to pursue it, to get ourselves in a place where we are allowing the Holy Spirit of God to lead us and guide us in every aspect of our lives. The Word of God says in Romans, the 8th chapter, <clears throat> uh, beginning at uh, the 6th verse. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is is life and peace. Beloved, carnal minded is, is simply this. You are led by the natural appetites and emotions of your flesh without discipline or control. Galatians 6, 8 says, Whatsoever you sow it to the flesh, 
will ultimately lead in to corruption. That which you sowed into the spirit will lead in to eternal life. So you and I have the ability to sow in either one garden or the other. One is of the flesh, where will ultimately lead to corruption. It will lead to damage. It will lead to a, uh, a, a short life span sometimes. But when we sow to that which is life or to the spirit, then we have life and we have abundant life. And beloved, that is covered with uh, peace. And so we have to be asking ourselves this. Are we willing to abide in life and peace? God knows our attempt sometimes to uh, 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 perceive in our hearts that we are doing the right thing sometimes in life. And sometimes we are not. But beloved, until we become to a point where we are no longer afraid of the Spirit of God and begin to allow the Spirit of God who lives on the inside of us to guide us. And beloved, we put aside the fear or the lack of understanding of spiritual things because we refuse to allow the Spirit to work in our lives. And beloved, if you are a Christian, if you're born again, then you ought to have a great desire to allow the Spirit of God to lead and to guide you. For look what the Word of God says in the seventh verse. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is an enemy of God. When we walk in a carnal mindedness. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. You remember in a previous study, I said that God's laws are perfect. But we were unable to keep those laws because of the weakness that was in our flesh. And this is why Jesus Christ came and died for the sins that are in our flesh. The sins even that we will commit in our flesh. Jesus died uh, for them. And as the Word of God says, because the carnal mind is an enemy of God. No one who is walking in carnality can say that they are a friend of God. They can say it, but truly is not true. Because you cannot be a friend of God and at the same time walk in carnality. And carnality is simply saying that you don't mind repeating sin over and over and over again and somehow believe that God is pleased with that. No, he's not going to destroy you. He's not going to take you out because of it. But because of your love for him, you don't desire to walk in that way because you are a reflection of the Lord. And being a reflection of the Lord, you desire to what? Do that which God desires for you to do. Now, look at the word of God said um, in the 8th verse. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So the carnal mind works against God. The mind, not subject to God's laws and cannot be subject. Many are faking it, but they are not subject to the laws of God. Because they can't. It's impossible without the Holy Spirit of God. Beloved, you can't even think about keeping the laws of God without the Holy Spirit of God leading you and guiding you through the, the laws of God. And beloved, the laws doesn't, first of all, the law does not justify us. It is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that justifies us, never the law. But when you have enmity against the law, 
and nor can you uh, keep the law because it's impossible for you to keep the law of God without the Holy Spirit of God guiding you and teaching you how to be able to do it. Beloved, following the, the Ten Commandments is not following the law of God. Now you will ask a Muslim that and they will, they will tell you that we follow the Ten Commandments. But yet they do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But yet they call Jesus a prophet. Well, he must be a lying prophet because he himself said that he was and is the Son of God. So I don't see how they can say that they believe him in one part and then at another point, don't believe what he said. Beloved, think about it. So that's why just the mere fact of believing is the beginning of our walk with the Lord. But as we grow in the Lord, through the word of the living God, it strengthens us and it, sh and it shares with us within our spirit and calls us to grow in the spiritual things that cannot be replicated by the flesh. The flesh can only do uh, uh, a certain nuances. Uh, like you might go to a service at some church uh, or some organization and they're doing all these organizational things and all they, they, they are pre-planned and uh, put together. And you can follow them through the form that they have set forth. That's the traditions of men, beloved. That does not bring eternal life. That does not even uh, 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 display what eternal life is about. Amen? So, beloved, if we want to walk in life in peace, it will be via the Holy Spirit of God leading and truly guiding us. But as the Word of God says, one who is in the flesh, they cannot please God. It is impossible for them to please God. But you, glory be to the living God, I was talking about believers here, but you are not in the flesh. This is what Paul writes. But you, believers, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. In other words, this is where you ought to be. This is where you ought to be walking at. Your concern should not even be in the flesh because you are not part of the flesh anymore. You are not part of carnality anymore. Beloved, it's amazing. The people that ask you to pray for them, why they walk in carnality. They want you to pray for them. Let me say something to you. If you're walking in carnality and you're fulfilling the lust of the flesh, it doesn't matter how much prayer that you ask for until you make up your mind that, you know what? I want my mind to change. I want things to change in my life. Well, beloved, let me tell you this. God will not force it. You will have to make a change. Amen? You will have to keep yourself from people who cause you to walk in a way that is contrary to God's life in peace. You're going to have to make a personal choice of putting some people away. You will have to make a personal choice of not going to some places that will bring you or draw you into carnality. You will have to turn off the television from programs that you know is feeding carnality within your flesh. You're going to have to do that. God is not going to do that for you. Amen? So you don't need to ask nobody to pray for you. You don't even, not, even ask the Lord to somehow deliver you out of it if you don't desire to deliver, to walk out of it. Beloved, God has given you the power by the Holy Spirit to walk away from all carnality that's in this world, all sin that's in this world. I don't care how difficult it may seem, how enwrapped you are in the web of his tentacles. Beloved, if you are willing to walk away from that, 
God the Father will give you the strength to keep you away from it. But beloved, you can't set things before your eyes and then wonder why you feel a certain way and why you feel like you have to act out on something that normally you would not have to. Beloved, it starts to rise up in your flesh. Your flesh desire it. So, beloved, if I really want life and peace, then I'll have to be willing to make this sacrifice and to walk away from it and believe that God is able to keep me from it and able to strengthen me so that way I won't go back there in it. Beloved, that is the only way. That's what makes sometimes Christianity difficult. Because, beloved, beloved, it is easy to believe. It is easy to receive salvation. But one of the difficult things it is to walk the Christian life or walk in this life that we live. Because there's temptations on every hand. And I don't have to tell you that. You know that. There's temptations on every hand. But God has given us the strength to be able to get through that and beloved you can do that you have the ability on the inside of you because you have the power of God living on the inside of you the same power the same strength that Jesus Christ had when he walked on this earth but beloved he had a choice made and a made up mind and that's all you and I have to do is get to a place of a made-up mind. When we have a made-up mind, beloved, we are able to attain that which God says that is ours. And if it is life, it is life abundantly. If it is peace, it is peace that surpasses all understanding. It is ours for uh, the taking. Now, Satan wants to cloak and lie to us and tell us we can't have peace in this earth. So what he does, he continues to bombard our minds with all kind of junk of this world. And before you know it, we become frazzled in our nerves. We don't know how to handle everything that is seemingly uh, the news cycle is telling us the whole world is falling apart and we are falling with it. Beloved, even if the world falls, we're not going to fall. And what I mean by fall, I mean the Lord will grasp us and catch us with his hand and hold us. Glory be to the living God. Beloved, the Holy Spirit is living in us. We are valuable to the Lord because of what, who lives on the inside of us. But look what the Word of God goes on and says. But you are not in the flesh. Remember that. Remember that. Hear it clearly in your spirit. You are not in the flesh. You are not part of carnality. But rather, you are in the spirit. If so, there goes the word if. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Amen? Have you asked the Holy Spirit of God to dwell in you? Or do you not know as a born-again believer that when you ask the Lord to come into your life, that He comes with His Holy Spirit to abide on the inside of you? And that's what makes you born again? Because the Spirit of God is dwelling on the inside of you? The Word of God says, Now, if any man, get this, have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Amen? So if you are a child of God, You've been born again. The Spirit of God living lives on the inside of you. Amen? If you have not been born again, then the Spirit does not live on the inside of you, and you are not a child of God. It is simple as that, beloved. That is not difficult. And it didn't say anything about feeling. If you feel the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, no. All of it, as I said earlier, is by faith. I trust that my Lord is living on the inside of me by His Holy and Divine Spirit. 
And beloved, can I quench the Spirit? Yes. Can I grieve the Spirit? Yes. But the Spirit will not abandon me until if I say, Holy Spirit, I don't want you in my life no more. I want to live the way I want to. I don't want to be controlled by the Spirit of God anymore. Let me live my own life, live it just like I want to. And I don't want to have anything to do with the Spirit of God. Am I capable, am I capable of doing that? Can I do that? Yes, I can. But, beloved, what a fool would I be? What a fool would you be if you did something of that nature? Once you have tasted of God's goodness, once you have tasted of His glory, of His power, of His majesty, of His cleansing of the mind and cleansing of the thoughts, dearly beloved, and you have walked in His abundant life and walked in His peace, beloved, why would you want to throw any of that away? You would not because you know that you cannot live this life without Him. I know it, beloved. I know I can't even attempt to try to live this life without the Lord God on my side. And I know you who are listening to me right now, you feel exactly the same way. Oh, I could not live without the Lord. I need the Lord in my life every minute of my life. I need Him in it. Because without Him, I have no joy. Without Him, I have no peace. Without Him, I really have no purpose. And beloved, we need purpose in order to live. The 10th verse says, And if Christ be in you, listen to this, beloved, the body is dead. When Christ came to live inside of you, the flesh now is dead. Amen? It is dead. Look what the Word of God said. It is dead because of sin. Because of sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Your flesh itself is dead death. A person who has not been born again is walking in death. They're wrapped around a flesh that is dead already. What gives us eternal life is the spirit living on the inside of us. And so the person who is not born again, they are spiritually dead and they are physically dead because of the sin that now dwelleth on the flesh or in the flesh itself. It makes them dead. Now the Word of God says, but, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Because we have become the righteousness of God, Jesus fulfilled the law. So we become, actually, we become perfect. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. We become perfect in keeping the law because of what Jesus did. Not because we kept the law, but we become perfect in the law because Jesus fulfilled the law for each and every one of us. And you know those who say, well, you know what? I'm keeping the law myself. They don't know what they're talking about. As I told you before in the study before, there's over 699 laws in God's word. And you would, have to fulfill, you would have to fulfill each and every one of them in order to be perfect before God. And the Word of God says that the flesh was weak and it could not fulfill the laws of God. So Jesus was sent in order to fulfill the laws of God. Now, because you and I are believers, we've been born again, we have now fulfilled the laws of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, no trying to fulfill the law. It's no trying to keep the law. It's already kept because of Jesus. Amen? Beloved, that is so simple. But when you are trying to attain salvation on your own, and with your own power, and to believe that somehow you are better than others, then 
you think that somehow you can do something in order to be approved by God by keeping His laws. Beloved, that, that is, you're sadly mistaken if you believe that. But the 11th verse, I want to uh, end on that. That's the most powerful verse, uh, I believe, in the Word of God because this gives you the abundant understanding of spiritual mindedness and life in peace. Look what it says. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Get this now, beloved. Dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So, beloved, I believe that's one of the most important uh, scriptures in the Bible other than to believe the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ and to be saved. I believe that this would have to be second in understanding of what takes place and understanding why the Spirit of God has to be acknowledged living on the inside of us. And there are some Christian uh, 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 sects that says that it doesn't matter because the Spirit of God does not live in man because man is an unholy creature and the Holy Spirit is some powerful force out there in the atmosphere. Beloved, the Holy Spirit is not that. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. That's why when people be saying, come Holy Spirit, they're in church, say, come Holy Spirit, come. And then they do some emotional thing and people say, well, I sense the Holy Spirit coming. No, beloved, you ain't sensing the Holy Spirit coming. You accept, you ex, uh, 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 experience emotional uh, high at that moment because the Holy Spirit is already living on the inside of you. He's not coming from heaven, beloved. He's already here living on the inside of you when you believed. Beloved, when we can get that understanding, we will begin to uh, understand the power of God that's working on the inside of us. Or we will go through this life with the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, but being grieved and quenched. Because we simply don't know that He is there abiding and living on the inside of us. And beloved, as I said from the very beginning, it is by faith. we got to trust and believe our Lord and our God. Amen. Beloved, may the Lord bless you. And we'd just like to thank the staff of Acadia and Open Channel for giving us this opportunity to share the word of the living God. And you can find that on uh, Acadiana Open Channel or A-O-C-I-N-C. A-O-C-I-N-C. And there's other uh, Understanding the Father's Heart uh, teachings uh, that are on uh, that particular uh, website or even Facebook page. And beloved, uh, you can become a friend at, e at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, or you can contact us if you so desire to at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, Post Office Box 186, Youngsville, Louisiana, 70592. Beloved, may the Lord bless you, may our Lord keep you by His holy and divine power, and may He continue to bless your understanding. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Hey.